In the previous video, we have created a way to generate corridors. Now we would like to generate rooms at the end of the corridors or at some points of the corridor. So generally at the end of each corridor is a good spot to generate a room. So we are going to randomly generate rooms uh, at those corridors depending on the parameters that we set in our corridor first dungeon generator script. So to do this, we will need to go to our scripts folder and reopen our corridor first dungeon generator. Okay. Now, we have created already some code to create corridors and we would like to add to it since uh, we will have to save the positions of the potential rooms. So in the corridor first generation method, we are going to duplicate the hash set and rename it from floor positions to potential room positions. And we will need to pass it to our create corridors method. So let's pass it here and let's copy this hash set potential room positions and paste it to the definition of our create corridors. Great. So as we are creating those corridors, we are going to set our potential room positions dot add our current position. So this is the start position as well as each next current position. So in the for loop, we are going to, after setting new current position, again, call potential room positions dot add our current position. So basically we are going to add the first position, which is the start position, and then each end of a corridor. So this will give us a good pool of positions for creation or for generation of our rooms. Now to generate our rooms, we are going to use the parameters like room percent that we have set in the, as the fields of our corridor first dungeon generator, as well as our room generator generation parameters. Now what we can do is go up and select our simple random walk dungeon generator, right click on it, go to the definition. Now here we have our random walk parameters that are visible in the inspector, but we cannot access those from the corridor first dungeon generation. So we are going to change its accessor from private to protected. Okay, let's save it. Let's go back to our corridor first dungeon generator and we can delete our room generation parameters. since we can reuse the one from our simple random walk dungeon generator. So let's save it. And now we have all the parameters that we need. So we have our potential room positions that we have created. So now after we create corridors, we can call hash set of vector to ints, and those will be the room positions equals, and let's create a new method create rooms and pass to it our potential room positions. We do not have this method, so alt enter on it and select generate method from the quick access menu. And this will be our new method in which we are going to create our rooms and return the hash set of the room positions. Now, as I have previously mentioned, we have passed here the potential room positions that uh, from which we are going to randomly select positions. So what we can do is create a new hash set of vector to hints. Let's call it room positions equals new hash set. Those will be the positions that we will return. Next, we are going to calculate uh, the number of rooms that we want to create. So int room to create count. And since we have a parameter called room percent, we want to take 80% of the all available position count. So potential room positions dot count times our room percent. Since we want to have an int value, we are going to add at the front of it math f dot round to int, and we are going to round this number to integer. This is the count of rooms that we want to generate. Now to randomize which points are populated with rooms, we are going to create a new list of vector to int room to create, and we are going to set it to be equal to our potential 
room positions and we are going to use link library let's type dot order by and alt enter to say using system.link so this library will be impl uh, imported here at the top of the class let's slide down and we have previously already used link library it is for uh, querying the collections so we can more easily extract some subset that we want to access in this case we want to sort our uh, potential room positions in a random order and to sort it we are going to type x lambda expression so equal sign and greater sign g u i d dot new GUID and this creates us a new globally unique identifier so basically a unique ID which is a number so if we have unique ID for each value of our potential room positions we can sort using this value and since each one is unique there is no telling what is the order so the order should be pretty random you can learn more about what is globally unique identifier by visiting guid.1 slash guid website and here is some more info about what it is and how it is created in any case what interests us in this is that we can use it to randomly sort our hash set and since we are already using link library it allows us to call dot take and we can take a specific number of values which in our case will be room to create count which we have calculated beforehand and we all we need to do is call dot to list to convert it to a list of our room to create points so all we did is randomly sorted our potential room positions hash set and taken from it our rooms to create count and converted converted it all to list so now we can call for each tab tab var tab room position tab and we can call room uh, to create i think i should rename it to rooms to create and now we can use our random uh, walk which we have in our simple random walk dungeon generator so let's go to it and this method is exposed here so we can call it to create a random room just like we have called it in this room procedural generation in our simple random walk dungeon generator so all we need to do is go back to our corridor first dungeon generator go to our create rooms method now in this for each loop we would like to call our method from the simple random walk dungeon generator which we are inheriting from so right click on it go to the definition and in the previously we have refactored this run random walk to take a simple random walk so parameters but i have forgotten that it also takes a start position so instead we would like to pass it a new position so let's add a comma in the definition of run random walk and let's pass here vector to int position and we are going to set our current position as the position not as the start position and now we can pass in the run procedural generation the start position and when we go back to our corridor first dungeon generator so save this simple random walk dungeon generator let's go back to our corridor first dungeon generator let's slide down to find our for each loop here we are going to be able to use the same method but instead of start position we are going to pass it a room position so what we can do is call var room floor and we are going to generate our rooms using our run random walk so simply the random walk algorithm we're going to pass our parameters so random uh, walk parameters that we have inherited from the simple random walk dungeon generator as well as the room position so now what this line will do is generate us rooms at the positions that we have selected at random now since we have those positions of our rooms all we need to do is we want to add to our room positions so our hash set dot union with and we want to make a union with our room 
lore. Again, this will allow us, uh, by using hash set, we are going to avoid uh, repetitions in our uh, collection. Now, after we loop through each room position where we want to create our rooms, we are going to return our room positions. Your rate. So again, we have created a hash set of room positions. We have created, uh, calculated the count of rooms that we want to select from our potential room positions. We have sorted the potential room positions and extracted from it the list of room positions that we want to take at random. And we have looked through each of those positions and created their uh, room using our random walk algorithm. And we are returning those positions as a hash set. So we go up, we have our room positions. All we need to do is create a union with our floor positions. So floor positions dot union with our room positions. And in this way, it should create us not only the corridors, but also our rooms. So let's save it. Let's go back to Unity. Get right. Select the corridor first dungeon generator object and make sure that we assign our room uh, random walk parameters. So let's select our island, for example, parameters. Now, if we click create, we can see that the rooms were created. And if we decrease the room percent to something like 0.5 and run again, we should see that only at some points our rooms were created. Okay. And since we are rounding the uh, integer value, we have more rooms or less rooms. In any case, we have one issue here. While it is great that we have created rooms, those dead ends are pretty awful. It would be terrible to make player walk towards this end and have nothing here, just a dead end. So instead, we will want to we want to take care of this by making sure that we create the rooms at the dead ends in addition to our rooms that we create overall. In the next video, we are going to make sure that we create rooms at each dead end so that our player doesn't experience the situation where he or she is walking through the corridor just to meet a dead end. So see you in the next video.